everyone for coming today. Really appreciate that. We've got a live audience. We're also live streaming this and it will be recorded. So it'll go out on YouTube um, and you can watch it later. Some of you will be watching it later um, that are seeing this now. So I'm Will Crow. I'm CEO and co-founder of We've got my co-founder Haranya as well. He's our CTO. We actually started Hero Robotics in 2016. Uh, we were two PhD students and we really wanted to know about a couple of objects in space and had no way to do it. Um, and that's really what this company is all about. So HEO is spelled HEO. HEO actually stands for High Earth Orbit. It's an acronym, one of many acronyms in the space community. Um, and really what this company is about is making space transparent. So looking at the objects that are out there that we can't necessarily see from the ground because we're too far away or it's obscured uh, or what have you. So yeah, we, we started the company. We're really pleased to be here today to be launching our first product. So I just wanted to, I guess, come back to the start and think about a little bit about the background. So a lot of people know this already in the audience, but I just want to make this uh, clear to uh, everyone at home and, and some of the people that might be new to the space community. So space isn't all about space. It's not all about Star Wars, um, although that's really cool as well. Um, it's about helping us here on Earth. So I'm going to go through a couple of ways that this happens today. Uh, first is Earth observation. So that's monitoring the environment, seeing where different sources of carbon or methane are coming from, looking at deforestation, um, or just trying to figure out how many people are, are going to shop on a, on a weekend so you can you know, scale up the infrastructure to meet it. Another one is telecommunications. We've been doing uh, communications in space for 70 years. Um, and it's really fantastic. You can be in one part of the world, beam up to a satellite, and that information gets to another part of the world. Um, now, there's a lot of satellites going up. You might have heard of a few mega constellations recently. Those are really critical because not everyone on Earth has access to internet. About half of the world's population don't. Um, and so a lot of space companies are addressing that problem. And that's one of the reasons it's important that so many satellites are going up right now. Uh, one last area is posi position um, and the ability to navigate based on position and timing. So all your phones are updated based on timing from GPS satellites, actually. So it's really important that they're up there as well. And it's not just about getting the Uber to the right place. Um, so all really important aspects of the industry. So this is why it's super critical that so many satellites are going up. This number of satellites is almost doubling um, every year, which is really exciting. It's also really challenging. So I think everyone here has heard about space junk and space debris and the inability of humans to use space. Our children won't be able to travel to space, all that kind of thing. Um, and it, sure, it's a problem. It might be a bit different to how people think about it. Um, but yeah, we here at Hero Robotics think it's a really critical problem to address as well. And people in space, space actors, can save money doing that as well, being more sustainable. And that's what our product's all about. I just want to go through a few ways that our products, I won't tell you what the product is yet, we're getting there. But I want to tell you just quickly a few ways um, in which the product can be used today. Um, that's today, without any changes uh, to your current satellites or current infrastructure in place in space. So we can help with on-orbit services. We can help with identification of space objects. And we can help with verification and monitoring of space objects as well. Now, don't worry. I'm going to explain all of these in some detail. Um, and we'll get to all three of the use cases. But I just want to put, you, put that in your mind. This product does all three of these things. Um, and your next question is probably how, and we'll, we'll get to that right now. So unveiling, HEO inspect. So it's the ability to inspect different satellites in orbit. We do it a little bit differently to most. So we literally use satellites that are in space today. We wait till they pass other space objects that we're interested in. And as we fly past them, we call it a flyby inspection. We take a look at the other spacecraft or space object that we're passing by. 
And what that means is that we're extremely quick. These things are faster than F1 cars. And we're passing a lot of these objects as we orbit around the Earth. We can get a lot of different inspections of different objects as we go past. So it's very fast. Um, it also means it's very scalable. So we can use a very few cameras to look at a large number of space objects. Obviously, the number of space objects is increase, increasing rapidly. So we'll need more cameras to accommodate that. Um, but that's, that's something that we're doing today. Lastly, we can do it using cameras that are already in space. That's what we're doing today. We're actually using Earth observation cameras. Uh, but also, when we get beyond that to other orbits where these cameras might not exist yet today, we can give cameras to space operators going to other orbits, um, and we can be really sustainable. We don't need to launch our own spacecraft um, to help solve this problem. So HEO Inspect itself is really simple. It's a software platform. It's already available today. You don't need to change your satellite to use it. It'll just start working. Um, and what you do to use it is you go into the software platform. I'll give you a little demo later. Um, you request an inspection. Our satellite network will actually inspect your satellite or, or debris that you're looking at for you. You don't need to worry about that. Our software platform does the analysis with a little bit of supervision from humans. And then the insights, that's the important part to you. We deliver that out the other end and you'll get a notification when that happens. You'll also be able to download that report or whatever information you need and provide that to your boss, your investor, your government, your regulator, or even your insurance company if you need to make an insurance claim. All of this can be done using HERO Inspect, and we're going to talk about how now. Firstly, I just wanted to um, cover in-orbit services. So I think in-orbit services, again, to the space community, makes a lot of sense. Um, but I just wanted to break it down for, for those people that are new to space. And I wanted to use an analogy, sorry, <laughs> um, but bear with me. So right now today on Earth, we use all sorts of services to help us get around. So for vehicular transport, for trucks, trains, uh, for cars. And we take a lot of things for granted that we do here on Earth today. So one of those is fueling a car, for example. One of those is modifying the vehicle or, or putting on a new tire or um, fixing a seatbelt if it doesn't work anymore. Another one is taking the car away when it's broken, when it doesn't work anymore. We take all that for granted, but in space, that doesn't happen today. So when you launch a satellite in space today, you take all the fuel you'll ever need with you. You'll make the spacecraft extremely robust and extremely costly in order to make sure that if something breaks, something else um, is there to replace it. Sadly, that doesn't work all the time. And about 25% of the largest, most valuable satellites actually uh, break down and, and have a critical failure before the end of their design life. Lastly, when your satellite breaks down, there's no one to take it away yet. Uh, so it just stays there and causes a hazard to other, other space vehicles that are up there. Now, the good news is all of these problems are being solved. They're all being addressed, not by us at here. They're being addressed by other fantastic companies that are building out this great ecosystem. So we can kind of treat space like we do vehicular infrastructure here on Earth today. This is fantastic. Um, and what we're doing at here Robotics is providing an inspection layer so we can really help people do these jobs the best they can. So when you're refueling your spacecraft, you might want to have a look to make sure that uh, the refueling pod is, is open and accessible to the refueling spacecraft first. Inspect can help with that. Before you change uh, a solar panel or add another part to your satellite, you might want to come along first, have a look with the satellite, uh, one of our satellites, sorry, and really make sure that everything's where it's meant to be um, or there really is a problem with the part that you're replacing. Lastly, when you're towing away a satellite to a graveyard orbit or deorbiting it, um, you want to make sure that the broken down satellite is, is safe um, to access and grab onto so you can do those activities. So inspection is a big part of all of this. 
Just taking a step back, um, I wanted to help everyone understand where we're at at a company today, what we can access, what we can look at. So um, at the moment, we can have a look at every satellite that's mini and larger. These are NASA classifications. So there's large, medium, small, mini here on the slide. There's also different classes as well, um, down to CubeSat. We can help with all from mini and above. Mini's um, kind of the size of a SpaceX satellite. They're actually quite large. They've got massive deployable solar panels. Um, and that trend that we're seeing with these new satellites launching, larger satellites, that's continuing. So it's kind of like with the mobile phone. So first, mobile phones got smaller. Some of you are maybe too young to remember that. <laughs> then they got bigger again. Um, and now we've got size of phones that are almost the size of uh, um, little iPads. So they're getting larger again. And that's what's happening with satellites today as well. Um, so the smaller satellite we can help with is micro some of the time, but absolutely mini and above. And these are some of the classes you see here. Now that's about two thirds of all satellites today that are in those classes. Um, and the proportions growing all the time. We can also service two thirds of low Earth orbit or LEO today. Um, so LEO goes up to about 1200 kilometers from, uh, from ground. We can service all orbits up to 800 kilometers, uh, which is fantastic. First, this service wasn't available before, right? But now almost all of LEO is covered, which is really exciting. I will mention as well that next year, we're going to GEO, geostationary orbit. It's a really high orbit. It's a really valuable orbit. Uh, we'll be going there next year with one of our partners, which we're really excited about. Um, you can applaud that one, I think. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is amazing, right? Like, came out of nothing. Um, no, but we're really excited about that and, and excited to work with our partners on that as well. One thing I just wanted to uh, kind of mention, this comes up quite a lot. Um, so one thing we like to do is show images that we take of the International Space Station. So the one on the left here is of the International Space Station. The image on the right is uh, taken from the ground, actually. It's taken by an astrophotographer called Dylan O'Donnell, who um, very graciously allowed us to use this image today. And um, it's a pretty good image. As you'll see, it looks pretty similar to the one we've taken. So both these images are non-processed. You might have seen better images out there, um, but they're generally the processed varieties. So both of these images can turn into um, something that looks a little bit better. But the key point is they're both about equal. So why is space-based imagery better? Well, first off, the International Space Station is the easiest object to image from the ground. So it's in just this precise enough orbit at a specific inclination uh, where you can have a good look at it every now and again. When I say every now and again, it's not just the weather that stops you from having a look at satellites um, from the ground, um, but also the, the atmosphere, um, the time of year really makes sense uh, and, and is, is really important. Uh, the time of day is really important. There's only a short time of day when you can take these images. And frankly, the majority of, of satellites that are in space today can't be seen from the ground because they're in um, orbits that don't facilitate that. Uh, so going from space just makes sense. And it makes even more sense the higher you go um, above Earth. So the further away you are, so GEO in particular, really makes sense to take those images from space and do these inspections from space rather than the ground. So ground's OK for one, one time a year. Space is what's important if you need to do this every day or every week. So I told you three things. I told you uh, in, in orbit services, I talked about identification and monitoring and um, inspection. Right now I want to talk about identification, which is actually a huge problem in space. So today I had a look at the HEO inspect software actually, and I saw that there's 343 objects that are unidentified according to the catalog that everyone uses. That's the US Department of Defense Space Track catalog. Um, so that's a real problem for a number of reasons. First off, if that thing that's unidentified falls to Earth and hits someone, how do you know who to complain to or 
who to mitigate that, that damage to. Secondly, uh, if it's careening towards another spacecraft and, and maybe causing a hazard in space, how do you know who to talk to to maybe get out of the way and, and maybe deal with that there? Lastly, identification and particularly early identification is absolutely critical when you're starting a satellite mission. You can't have a satellite that goes unidentified for 24 hours where it's not talking to you and you don't know where it is so you can't send a reboot signal. That time of life is critical. If you don't find your satellite within 24 hours, you're probably never going to find it. Turn it on and um, get a successful mission and so you're automatically creating debris. So what we do at here, we've got a no UFO policy. We've got a photo of a UFO here. It's, it's the, the Tic Tac UFO seen by um, fighter pilots in the US. And we really want to make UFOs go away. So we've already started to identify objects that are in space that are unidentified. And we've got a sneak peek at one of those today. Object K. So when an object's unidentified, the US just call it object. Um, and then the, the K is just like the, it goes A, B, C, D in the launch until we get to K. So the majority of objects on this launch um, are still unidentified. We were able to identify one. So this one was a really strange object. It's a very improbable object. It shouldn't even be in space. And the reason for that is it's actually the payload fairing from a rocket that launched uh, early last year. So when a rocket launches, it releases payload fairing pretty early in the launch. It's meant to just fall back to Earth. Half of the payload fairing on this launch did, so they, it splits in two half, one half fell. This, this one's still in space, so the rocket deorbited. <laughs> Somehow it's still there. So it's really improbable, and, and this is why photographing the thing is so important, because if it's an object that shouldn't be there, how the heck are you going to know what to look for um, until you photograph it? So that's what we did. It took us a while to figure it out, um, because it was such an improbable object. Um, but we do know now that it's, it's one half the payload fairing. We've notified Space Command in the US and relevant authorities here in Australia, um, some of whom are here tonight. Thank you for coming. Um, and this is really critical. Now, we're putting out a white paper on this. We think identification is so important that we're just doing it. We're not waiting for anyone to help us. So we put out a white paper. Um, it's a, we're getting a sneak peek now. It will be available in the next 24 hours from our website. We've, we're also talking about it at, uh, at an academic conference coming up soon. And um, we're seriously thinking about putting it in a peer-reviewed journal as well. So yeah, this is just so important. It needs to be done. Identification is critical. And if you have a satellite that you need to work to do a thing in space, it's really important that you have imaging. I might just backtrack and tell you guys a little story. So currently what happens with satellites, and this is really intelligent, they have a little radio beacon aboard. Beep, beep, beep. Most of the time that works great. That's fantastic. And that identifies the satellite and helps people know where it is so they can start their mission. Sometimes it doesn't work. And it's a large proportion of the time. It's around 20% of the time that that beacon doesn't work. Now, a lot of people think that the way to counteract that is to add another beacon. So you have a backup beacon. Sounds really smart, except hear me out. The reason the first beacon doesn't turn on is usually power failure. So if one beacon doesn't turn on because of power, maybe the other one won't as well. Um, it's pointing the wrong way. It's pointing the wrong direction. Um, or there's numerous other things that would happen aboard. Um, but the pro point is, if one beacon doesn't turn on, the other one's probably not going to either. What we're saying at here Robotics is, have your beacon. That's really critical. That's the best way to identify your satellite. As a backup, Everyone should be taking a look at the satellite. And just to verify that it's theirs and to show authorities, I think it just makes sense. And it's, it's really what we're trying to evangelize here. So please, use your beacon, image as a backup. Now, here, robotics wouldn't be anything without our suppliers. 
We've got a bunch of great suppliers who we'll be talking about over the next several months. We'll be announcing um, different partnerships that we have. We're really excited about working with them. Um, and as I said earlier, generally today we're working with Earth observation satellite providers. Those are people with satellites already in space with really powerful cameras that we can use to image other spacecraft as they fly close by. Um, so that's a partnership that's worked really well for us. We've got 33 satellites that we use today. We also know that going to some orbits that we care about and really making this possible in every orbit around Earth, we need further cameras. So we're actually building a bunch. We're doing it here in Australia, mainly to uh, counteract all those uh, supply chain issues that you've all been hearing about. This is actually the first flight model that's being tested right now that you see here on the screen. Um, and they're really great. These are optimized for space situational awareness and space domain awareness based on what we already know from the cameras that we're already using in space. Um, and they're quite small as well. They're bread low sized. And the idea is that you can put one of these on every satellite that's being launched um, into space. And we want as many of these cameras in space um, as we can. It's critical that we have even more supplies. We have really big ambitions. We need as many cameras in space as possible to really make this uh, program successful. So the HERO supplier program. It's pretty, it's pretty simple, I think. Either you've got a camera in space already, or you're sending a camera to space. Great, check. If you don't have a camera, we'll give you a camera. We'll give it to you. Uh, there's a contract to sign, but it's not it's not particularly hard. We'll make sure that it integrates correctly into your satellite. The best thing is, step three, it's a new revenue stream. So what we know from our Earth observation suppliers today is that the satellites are only used about 10% of the time. That's because they're, they're generally used to look at the Earth, um, which is a small proportion um, of their total orbit. And other things happen, like it's clouded over, they're over ocean, or sometimes it's nighttime, so you can't see much during those times. We increase utilization from 10% up to 70%. Because we're looking at other space objects, clouds aren't an issue, um, over the ocean is great, and we can even use the satellite during some of nighttime as well. So we'd love you to reach out to us. Please email us at info at herobotics.com. Um, and we'll also have a link on the website in the next 24 to 48 hours as well that we'd love you to start using. So today, we've got 33 satellites. They're all in low Earth orbit. As I said a bit earlier, we are going to GEO next year as well, which is really exciting. But that's only 1% of our ambition. With the number of satellites going up, we think it's above 100,000 over the next five years. We believe that we'll need at least 2,500 cameras in orbit. Um, again, that doesn't mean 2,500 spacecraft. That just means we'll have a camera on a lot of those spacecraft that are going up. And that'll really enable us to inspect as many objects as possible in space, really keep monitoring, and really ensure that it's a safe environment for everyone to use. So I've told you about two of the three use cases. This is the last one, I promise. Uh, so it's monitoring and verification. Now, the way that we do that is pretty clever and massive kudos um, to the HERO robotics team. So we take images of spacecraft and we do a bit of analysis on them. Another critical part of what we do is creating 3D models of the same spacecraft, understanding which position they're oriented in, what's aboard, and what is different to what should be on there, whether it's a hole in the spacecraft or whether something didn't deploy correctly, if there's solar panels at right angles, um, or maybe it's something else entirely. Maybe you want to monitor what's going in and out of the space station, for example. This is an image of the space station right here. All critical. Now, ITAR is a massive problem for a lot of our customers, and we help them mitigate that. So we actually create all the uh, 3D models in-house um, and we do it in such a way that we can really extend um, the information that we get out of every image that we collect and every model that we create. Um, at the moment, there's uh, a supervised technical um, 
way to do this where we, we have um, literally people investigating this. Over time, we believe we'll build a big enough data set that we'll be able to automate a lot of these features using machine learning and uh, other AI features. Uh, so I've held out for a long time. We're almost at the end of my presentation, but should we have a look at Hero Inspect? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah? All right. Cool. So this is the homepage right here um, that we're looking at. We've made this as beautiful and easy to use as possible. So it's not like other space software or hardware, which is you need a PhD to operate. We've Netflixified it. So you can easily access all the reports that you create up the top. Um, so for example, if we wanted to go to the space station like we just looked at, uh, we can go straight there, uh, have a look at the most recent images, and also have a look at different images that we've taken over history. So we can get a time, time horizon on what's happening. So we see different spacecraft going in and out of the space station. During the time that we've been imaging the space station, Crew 3 Dragon, Crew 4 Dragon have been coming and going. Sometimes they're there at the same time, which is really exciting. Um, but hey, that's looking at historical data. As you can see on the, the left-hand side here, we can identify as well. Um, we've got my here. That's where you can look at the objects that you've been um, interested in and that you have access to. Um, and also uh, look at your history as well, what you have looked at in the past. Probably the most exciting thing you can do using Hero Inspect is actually inspect. Um, does anyone want to task a satellite to look at another satellite right now? Yeah? yeah? Okay, that was a bit half assed Come on, <laughs> we can do this. Let's do this highlight, right? That's what we're here for. Great. We're all going to do this together. So you're all implicated in looking at the, uh, we'll look at the International Space Station. So I'll just search that here. As you can see, it's an extremely fast search. So we're bringing all the great stuff in um, internet and um, information technology, bringing that to space. Space should not be in the Stone Age anymore. Um, it should be in the, the 21st century, and we're bringing it there. So we just check on the ISS there. We review opportunities. It's doing a bit of thinking. Now we've got eight opportunities over the next seven days, the next week. So that's almost, or just over one a day. Uh, we've got okay resolution. It's not the best, but it's pretty good and it's enough to see what's happening aboard the International Space Station. So one and a half to two meters there roughly. And we see that the next opportunity is happening in about seven hours, so not too far away. So we should do it right now. <laughs> one last thing I should mention is that every one of these opportunities is a high probability of success. So when something's a low probability, we'll let you know. Um, but we expect to see something over the next couple of days um, because we've got that opportunity coming up. So we can either select a campaign, um, which is where you want to look at the same object over a number of weeks or days um, or even longer, or we can do a spot image. We'll just do a spot image today so we know which one that we took, right? So I'll select spot image there. I'll press initiate inspection. Um, and get this, guys. I don't want this to be an anticlimax, but we've already done it. We've already finished. So <laughs> that's how easy it is. Yeah. And this is how simple space should be. Um, so we'll go back to the slides. Yeah, we just. That was an anticlimax, but that just happened. So. <laughs> I don't want you to take my word for it, though. So um, here Robotics, auto so after that happens, here Robotics automatically tasks the best opportunities to look at the ISS um, over the next couple of days. Um, fingers crossed, this will happen, though. Um, <laughs> fingers crossed, we're going to have that image back by Friday. So I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to log into Hero Inspect. So you can actually create an account today if you want. So you can go to Inspect herorobotics.com, create an account right now. What I'd love you to do even more, so Hero Robotics, the, the um, Hero Inspect software is very powerful. Uh, there's a lot of features. 
and there's a lot it can do for you. So we weren't able to go through much of it today, but what I would love is you to book a demo and you can do that through our website today. And our customer success team is absolutely waiting for you um, to, to come say hi to them and, and have them walk through uh, the software with you. So please do go ahead and do that. Um, and yeah, let's have a look at the image that we all created together and we'll add the 3D model as well and we can do a great comparison. And you're all a part of this. So thank you. <laughs>